Hello everyone, this is Nathan from TheEbookReader.com. For this video, I'm going to show you the Motorola Zoom. I've been playing with this thing for the past week, and um, it's pretty cool actually. Um, it's not getting enough credit as far as I'm concerned. Um, so what I'm going to do with this review, I've made a list here. I'm going to go in through different things here if you want to fast forward to a different section. First, I'll start out with like the specs and hardware and then go into Honeycomb. Then I'm going to give a tour of the Zoom as an e-reader with some different e-reading apps and stuff on the web browser. And I'll show you the Android market, some different um, apps here, um, some games and videos, and I'll show you the camera at the end. Okay, so to start off with um, spec-wise, um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail from this. You can get this on the written reviews. But uh, one thing I want to point out is that it's got the 10.1-inch uh, inch screen. It's got the resolution of 1280 by 800. I'm really liking the screen size personally. It seems to, um, it's a little bit, uh, it's a lot different than the iPad for instance, which is much more square. So I find it uh, makes this device a lot more comfortable holding like this and in um, portrait mode. So it's not quite as narrow as some of those other true widescreen devices. It's got a little bit more width too, so I kind of really like this screen size myself. As far as hardware down here, we have um, um, mini USB port, mini um, HDMI port, and then on top there's a micro SD card slot, and then on the back it's got it's also got a camera right there, two megapixel camera on the back. It's got five megapixel camera. There's even a um, flash. And there's a speaker on each side there, and there's the volume button. Okay, so as far as the um, Honeycomb goes, it's a complete new operating system designed just for tablets. Um, it's got a different setup for your apps. Um, so what you do is if you want to add some apps to your home screens, you just hold down. You can choose which screen to go to. You can also uninstall them directly from here just by going up to uninstall. So that's something new. You got all your different apps listed here. So most of these are actually free apps that I've downloaded. There's just a couple of paid apps. So there's quite a few free apps already available that you can get. I'll show you some of these later. So obviously some other things with Honeycomb. It's got a lot of things, a lot to do with these widgets. Um, so to add those, you do the usual long press, and you got different stuff in here for different wallpapers. Um, you could do live wallpapers and um, add your own wallpapers into the gallery. And so um, this is also another way to add app shortcuts. You just come in here and then drag it to wherever you want. And then like I said with the widgets, so some apps are designed for widgets and some aren't. Um, probably a lot more will start being designed for them now that the honey comes out here. So um, you just take uh, the, the uh, widget and drag it onto the screen you want just like you would the app. This one's for the web browser. So you got different, uh, you got your bookmarks for the web browser right there. So that's a pretty cool aspect of uh, Honeycomb. You've got your search up here. You can do voice search. Kindle. So, brings up Kindle and stuff. You can search on the web or you can search through your apps. Okay, so, like Honeycomb, it has the five windows right here. You swipe through to get through. That's your new honeycomb clock. It's got the settings area down here. If you pop this up you got your brightness adjuster and different settings there and then the actual settings menu has been totally revamped over the earlier versions. So like in your applications now you got uh, tells you how much memory you've got. You can get your go to the running applications and then for storage um, there's the um, zoom comes with 32 gigs of storage so you got different things in here for that. Okay, so obviously all your um, navigation is done with these buttons down here. This is the back button, this is the home button, and this is your recent apps button. I really, really like this. So you can just jump really quick between different apps, what you were previously doing. Okay, so now I'll give you a tour of the built-in e-reading app, the Google Books app. So obviously it connects to the Google, um, you got Google's free ebooks and Google's new launched ebook store. Um, what it does is it takes you to the Android um, store to browse through the books right here. It's in the Android store and you got different categories over here. Uh, so the free books, like you got all Google's free books right over here. Of course there um, aren't any sorting options yet. I don't know that if they'll be adding some more or not. So right now it's kind of hard to search through all these. But um, getting back to the app itself, 
Um, it's got the animated page turns. And it's also got uh, various font settings up here. So we've got, you can actually, one thing that's interesting about the Google Books app is you can view the scanned version. That's not something else you're going to get in any other kind of app. I don't know why you'd want to do it, but I guess you can if you want to. There's also different, let's go back to text here. There's different, you got the day and night theme. So if you want to go with a black background for reading at night, that's pretty nice. There's also, so let's go back to the day mode. There's uh, three different text sizes. There's obviously you got the portrait mode as well. Like I said, I kind of like this uh, screen size. The layout isn't too narrow in portrait mode, like it is on some of those smaller widescreen devices. So um, that's about it as far. You got different uh, settings for line height. Um, and then there's different typefaces as well, different serif fonts here. And the, my probably my favorite is the Droid Sans, actually. Droid serif, Droid Sans. And then you've got um, some different options up here. The um, you can make it available offline, so you don't have to be online to read it. And then obviously there's uh, you got the table of contents right here. So as far as the Google Books app, that about uh, that's about the features you've got. You got the e-bar down here. And um, one thing I don't like about this app is that you can't load in your own books at all. So you're completely dependent on Google Books for content. Um, so that leads you to the plethora of other e-reading apps that you can install via the Google Market, the Android Market. So there's a whole bunch of e-book reader apps. You got the you know obviously the Kindle, the Nook, um, Kobo apps. Some of the other really popular ones are Cool Reader, Moon Reader, FB Reader. Um, my favorites are the ones I have installed over here. So you have to have the Kindle and the Nook apps to read those books, but all the other places like um, Borders and Kobo, you can actually load their ebooks into the Aldeco app, which I prefer because it's got a bunch of uh, different settings that those apps don't have. Um, so it's got the two page view here. It's also, um, you can adjust a lot of the settings here. There's a bunch of um, options for text um, size, text height. You can adjust the formatting and the background color. So I kind of like this app a lot for that reason. They seem to have updated it recently. It was having a few issues with sentences being cut off. You had to increase the margins, but it seems to be working just fine now. And you can actually load Adobe DRMD books in here as well as DRM free EPUB and PDF books. And so another really good app to have is this one because you can get ebooks from your ebooks and audiobooks from your local libraries. So that's a definitely a must have e reading app if you want to get some library books. Then so for those various PDF apps, the most popular is Replico, it costs five bucks. If you need to do annotating and highlighting and stuff like that, there's a bunch of free PDF apps. Um, like I said I'll deco load PDFs um, and for viewing PDFs doesn't have any kind of annotating or highlighting features so then there's all obviously there's a few different comic apps as well look really good on the screen got the pinch to zoom of course and then you can go to different apps like uh, just right back and forth right there using the multitasker So some other options, of course, um, I'm not going to get into a whole lot of detail, but there's this, um, these apps, there's a couple different kinds for um, viewing and editing Microsoft um, files. So this one you can, uh, you know, you can create a Word document or Excel file to type notes or whatever. Okay, let's back out of here. So there's all kinds of different apps for e-reading functions. As far as that's what makes Android, you know, so popular. So you can install, you, you can have a Kindle on here, a Nook on here, you can have everything on here. 
So aside from e-reading apps, there's also a lot of news apps, but uh, there's not a whole lot for the tablet versus jets. This is still the first Android tablet as of this review. So there's a few different um, tablet-oriented uh, news apps. So this is the CNN app. Lays out like this. You got the big pictures right there in different sections over here. And then, of course, on the home screen, you've got the or on the widget. This is the CNN widget over here. So you got different uh, the top news stories, or you can set different sections to show up on the app. And then once you launch it, it launches the article um, in this view where you have the article over here to the left. And you got your comments down here, and then any image or video associated with the articles over there on the top of the page. So that's a pretty nice layout for, for tablets for an app. There's also this thing up here you can listen to CNN radio. Um, and there's live video which is I'm running right now. So that's uh, one of the tablet apps for news. There's Pulse. This is an RSS reader. So you can load a bunch of different news feeds from around the web. One problem I haven't have with it is I haven't found a way to load my Google Reader RSS apps already. So I think you have to like go in and do them all manually. So when you click on an article it will bring it up over here on the left and you can view it as text or you can view it as it appears on the web kind of an odd angle here, let me hit the web version, okay and then so you can choose to view it view your articles how they are on the web or just how you would on a, the um, just the basic text like I was saying, so if you view it in portrait mode it's got a different layout puts these articles down here and your main articles up at the top so it's got a really nice layout. It includes the hyperlinks and the images and everything. It even includes the um, option to go to the original article down there. But um, so then you go back here, you got all your lists. So that's uh, one of the tablet apps as well. So another one is the USA Today. They've got a tablet version of their app out. So you can load the phone version of the apps. They work fine too, but uh, they're just more stretched because they're designed for smaller screens. So this is kind of an example of how you don't want to build your apps, in my opinion. It's nice layout over here. You've got your news articles and your article right here. But what I don't like is you've always got this like huge ad right there, like no matter where you're at. So, um, you know, that's one thing that I'm kind of annoyed with on this thing. But other than that, you can go full screen up there. This is kind of different options for news apps. Um, obviously, you got the regular old Google Reader. This is probably my favorite not anything special like super spectacular or anything but you know it uh, lists all your articles there and then it just shows them as it would on Google Reader you can also use the web browser to log into it using the web browser just like you would on your computer it's got a slightly different layout but for the most part it looks just like that okay moving on from the e-reading apps and the news apps let me show you the new Android web browser like I was saying earlier, right here you got your widget for the bookmarks. And when you launch your browser, you got your different tabs up here. And if you have more tabs open, you can slide through them like that. So the web browser, this new web browser works pretty good. I'm used to using the Dolphin web browser for Android, but I think this one's going to make me switch on over. Loads pretty quick. Everything's pretty nice and smooth with as far as the um, scrolling goes plays a video, plays flash video of course CNN so do, uh, it takes it a second for the video to start up once you go to a new tab and when you go to a different tab or if you go to a different app the video will automatically stop or it'll automatically pause where it's at to go full screen you just do the long press guess not, sometimes you long press on them and it'll bring the option up right there, other times you double tap But usually you can go full screen by pressing down. Um, this one doesn't have that option for some reason. So there's also Flash Games since it's got Flash support. One thing I found out with the Flash Games though is it needs to be set up for some kind of interaction because these ones all expect you to use a mouse or something like that. Um, of course you got um, Wikipedia. Let me show you some different stuff when you long press. You get the open another the background tab and you also get some other options here. So. Um, you can copy the link, save the link. If you also want to copy text, you can just hold down long press and you can move your little it goes right here. You can copy, share these. If you want to make a note or something, you can just automatically add it to your notes. So that's one thing that's pretty cool about this new browser. Some other options here. We've got 
your menu bar up here for forward and back and your refresh and where you enter URLs and your bookmark things right here. It's got the nice visual layout for bookmarks and you got history as well. Some other options here. You've got this side thing in the settings up here. You got incognito too if you don't want to save cookies. So some other options and settings. There's this deal right here for quick controls. So if you want to use your controls over here, so that's the menu button, new tab bookmarks, stuff like that, if you don't want to have the, the top bar. I like the top bar better. So that's one of the things you got with the new web browser. I still wish I had a way to organize bookmarks because you can't move those around or anything. And so other options, you got your downloads page, some other stuff with settings, you know, you just got your... you can set the tabs open in the background or open in new windows, um, different search engine defaults and stuff like that, different uh, zoom sizes if you want to have different zoom. So if you're on an article, you can double tap to zoom. Obviously it's got pinch to zoom as well. Okay, so that's some of the stuff with the web browser. Let's move on. Let me show you the how the Android market lays out. It's got a new layout for the tablets here. And it also will show featured tablet apps up here on the top, like whichever section you go to. You get your free section, of course, top paid apps. It always has this banner up here where it's advertising new apps. You got different sorting sections down here. Of course, you can run searches. So when you pop on something, it'll show you the featured app different apps on here and obviously same old thing if you want to download it okay now let me show you a different couple apps that come on here it comes with all the standard Google apps these are pretty much all pre-installed apps it doesn't come with much bloatware um, and it's got a couple of games it comes with um, so you know you got the standard old Google or the Android stuff you got your calculator you got your calendar the stuff is pretty much the same as it's always been a little bit different layout a little bit different look so um, you got the Google Maps, of course. It's got some a couple of different things here. If you got, it's got some 3D view for certain areas like this. If you want to get a real look in, um, and of course you've got the usual street view. You get your different directions, find nearby places, so you can get a real good look at where you're going. I really like this app. It's pretty cool. If you're trying to figure out directions on something, so. Um, a couple other things, you know, you got the standard, you got satellite view of the traffic layers. Um, there's really not a whole lot to go into with this. It's pretty standard Google Maps. So some other stuff here. This is, uh, let me show you this one app that it comes. Um, it was designed for these tablets, I believe. It's this new body app. It's pretty cool here. You got different uh, layers, different parts of the body. And then when you use, oops. So yes, sometimes you get some forced closes with Android. The new Google Android operating system, you just open it right back up. You're good to go. Some apps seem to do it more than others. Okay, so like if you tap on something, it'll tell you what it is. Different parts of the body. If you want to search for body part, it'll tell you about it as well. Okay, some other apps you've got, you know, the standard Google Sky Map that works as well. If you've ever messed with this app, it's pretty cool at night. You can go up and check out the stars and see what everything is. Some other stuff here. So I've noticed like some things won't work, like you get the force closed. If you download the Pandora from the the market it won't work but I downloaded this older Pandora it seems to work fine okay so let me show you a couple of games really quick this thing obviously with the Tegra 2 NVIDIA processor um, games are a big draw for it this is one that it comes with 
so everything's pretty smooth every once in a while it will you get going really fast you notice right there it does uh, jerk every once in a while but for the most part everything's pretty smooth some other games obviously you got the free birds games these are very popular everything runs smooth so you got the with the multitasking you can just go right back and forth in between different uh, games and different apps and you'll be right where you left off so you just pauses it automatically and you're good to go when you go back to the app some apps it will start you back at a certain spot you'll have a pause or something like that for the most part yeah you got the different games here this is the one that shows on the commercials there's this dungeon defenders game it comes with this one free so all these are free there's a bunch of paid games as well of course so one other thing uh, there's a new YouTube app you got the new layout everything's um, you know very visual you got your movie walls what it looks like here and obviously you have uh, your own channel you got your images right here if you click on something this is what the layout looks like and you can bring up your comments over here if you want and you got your description down here to go full screen you got the button right there took me a minute huh you've got high quality options and obviously the standard quality for email we've got this new email layout it's um pretty nice actually I like it and of course on the home screen you saw there I had um, you got this little email widget right here where you can scroll through there and keep updated that way um, so the app it lays out like you've got um, sort of like the regular Gmail you got your stuff over here and then you got your articles to the right and then it'll mostly go over here you got this different um, your contact goes right here and then when you want to reply to something bust up your thing right here and you type it good to go the keyboard works pretty good. It's not as easy as obviously a real keyboard, but with a wider layout like this, it's pretty easy to type. It's quite a bit smaller, obviously, in portrait mode. It's more of a thumb way that way. You can use your thumbs. So I'm liking the um, definitely liking the, the new layout of the the email application. Let me move on to some other options here. We've got the movie player, and you've got the gallery got this layout where it's like when you tilt it it's got this sort of 3D effect same thing when you sort of pull it so I noticed one thing that's odd there's that one video game and for some reason all of its images show up here I'm not quite sure why it does that sometimes some images will show up in here automatically you kind of wonder where they came from so obviously as far as the image gallery it's like pretty um, pretty standard you get your pinch to zoom then you got your slideshows these are some pictures I took camping last year so you've got your different options up here you can share them delete them you can do your slideshow like I was saying rotate crop so for movie player it plays uh, different sets of movies of course you've got the it's a little bit higher than standard widescreen you can fast forward what I kinda like is you can see exactly what's going on when you're fast forwarding so as you see there's no like menu options to um, like the iPad you can make it fit to the screen I kinda wish it had an option like that for these widescreen layouts but there's really isn't any kind of options whatsoever but when you back out of here it will save your time if you go back into it again so I mean the video player plays smooth see one thing I've noticed back button doesn't work most of the time so there's kind of a bug in there somewhere okay so then there's uh... it comes with it has a camera of course and a video player So the camera functions is actually pretty good. You've got some different options over here. See it's got the flash, you got different settings for white balance, different color effects, different uh, scene modes. See there's actually quite a lot of options here for the camera. I've been impressed with the camera. The quality is pretty good too. I'll put a picture on the written review if you want to check it out. It's also got uh, 720p video recording. Um, the video recording is good but it's not great. It's a little bit grainy. Um, again, I'll, I'll go over this more in the written review. For now, um, I think I'm going to wrap up this review. This thing has gotten extremely long already. I'll cover a lot more details in the written review. You can find it at ebookreader.com. So, thank you for watching.